Well, joining us now to discuss the significance of the NSARS protest is a former River State Commissioner for Information and CEO Tam George Consulting, um, Austin Tam George. Um, good to have you join us at this hour. Um, so many information has been said about this um, NSARS. We've seen the protests and we've seen the wanton destruction of um, what has taken place after that. Um, let's look at the significance of this protest now and the role of the youth in shaping the future of our country from here on. Well, I, I didn't quite get the question, but um, I, I think you are asking about the significance of the, of the protest. And That's think, it. Um, yes, I think the message is, is, is quite clear. Um, Nigerians um, are tired of the culture of impunity uh, that we seem to be getting used to. And so young people across the country, even in the diaspora, uh, came together to say, look, another Nigeria is possible, an alternative and reality can be constructed for our country. Um, I think that the answers was actually um, ultimately a figure of speech. It, it was a metaphor uh, for institutional impunity, uh, not just with the police force. I, I, I think the, the intention is to, to see whether we can start a national dialogue on, on the way we can we can hold those who hold public office accountable. So, so the answers is actually an entry point into a larger dialogue um, about how we can completely rethink um, the direction of our country. So I think that for whatever um, it, it is worth, we can distill um, some very important lessons from it. One um, is that citizens want to get more involved. They want a more participatory form of government so that more and more people can get to influence the kind of institutional values um, that um, animates our, our public uh, space. Uh, if you want to hire the police, for instance, they want a more, much more transparent and accountable process. Um, those who um, wear uniform uh, should be able to act responsibly uh, and, and within the law. But beyond that, I think there is now a clear message that uh, if you hold public office, you hold it in trust and they are ultimately accountable to the people. And, and at some stage, uh, the people are going to react. And I think that is what we have seen. Um, I think it goes beyond simply, um, you know, talking about the, the specific police unit. You see, there, there is there's a challenge uh, for, for us to rise uh, to what looks like the culture of the impunity in this country. Mm. Uh, indeed, uh, Dr. Tam George. Now, the public institutions or watchdog set up to uh, serve as uh, accountability. Apparently, they have their shortcomings, uh, no doubt. How can they be strengthened? And how does the protest help us create a culture of uh, public accountability here? Well, I think that if, if, you, if, you, if you hold public office, whether as a governor, or as a legislator, or as president, um, or you work in any of the government institutions, or even in the, in the private sector, uh, we need to completely retain the values uh, that we represent. Um, if you are, if you particularly hold public office, whether in an elected or appointed capacity, and um, you should know that you hold that office in trust, and that um, there is a social contract between you and, and the rest of society. Um, so, what what this has uh, protest? Um, crystallizes uh, for, for me it is that Nigerians are just tired of, of impunity. They just want um, to use the SARS as an entry point for us to have a national, a national dialogue um, that transcends uh, the, the, the form of the police force and that, that goes to speak about the quality of governance and how we recruit those who, who, who occupy public office. Um, I mean, what, what can we do um, to make sure that we, for instance, have um, greater transparency and inject democracy uh, um, into, into our electoral process? I, I think if I were president, uh, you know, I will seize this as an opportunity um, you know, to, to expand the space for, for national dialogue to say, look, beyond police reform, which is inevitable at this point, uh, what else can we do? Um, in terms of recruiting those who 
who get into the police force, in terms of recruiting those who um, eventually get into the multiple spaces, in terms of holding those who, 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 who hold public office uh, to account. You know, we need to break this ritual of simply waiting for four years to choose our leaders. And as soon as the elections are done, we all fall back, you know, to what, what is happening. We need to engage. And I think that this, this NSAS protest uh, should be the beginning of um, citizenship engagement with those who hold public office to make sure that, look, if you're doing this, remember that the segment, an important, the most productive segment of society for that matter, we do, are watching. And, you know, these days they deploy technology, meaning that no matter their geographical location, whether they're in Onitsha, whether they're in Abuja, whether they're, they're in Auckland, in, in, in Australia, or whether they're in Canada, they can use the, the internet as a converging point, you know, to build a broader and um, citizenship consensus to say, look, we want a different direction for our country. And then they use that as a basis for mobilization worldwide. And so, Dr. Tom George, um, talking about engagement, as you have said, let's look at the roles of all the participants in this um, protest. Let's look at the roles of the federal government, the roles of the military, the roles of the police, and the state's governments in this protest. What's your sense? Well, I, I think that, as I said, you know, at the federal government level, this is an open invitation for a larger, more serious conversation concerning the direction of our state and the direction of our country. Obviously, more and more Nigerians are disgruntled and um, are totally unhappy uh, with the direction of our country. We think that we need a more empathetic, more, 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 um, in, in, you know, engaging style of government. We, we haven't seen that so far. Uh, we also need to make sure um, that you know we lubricate the channel of communication between those who, who are in public office and those who are who are citizens. We, we, there, there seems to be this 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 aloofness, you know, um, in government styles uh, that we are seeing coming from the federal government. And frankly, uh, at all at all levels of government, you know, we need a greater participatory process. Uh, that is it. What we what we have now, at least as far as uh, the, the response to this protest so far uh, has been. Um, unfortunately, at the level of the military, unfortunately, the, the period of the protest also coincided with when the military says they want to start or activate um, uh, what they call Operation Crocodile Smile, uh, which is uh, some kind of security operation um, in the nationwide. I, 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 would have, I would have thought that certain operations that have been postponed to show sensitivity um, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the moment, you know, if, if you are announcing such a massive military operation at a time where there is um, a global uh, protest against um, security impunity in the country, the, the timing could have, could, have been, could have been better managed, I think. Mm. Then at the level of the state, state governors, it, it seems curious, uh, frankly, that um, uh, the default response seems to be to impose um, coffins here and there. I would have thought that this would have been, you know, you know, at the state level, we, we, we should have seen, and I think someone has suggested this um, elsewhere, we should have seen greater participatory process, holding town halls, you know, engaging different um, civil society groups, opening up the public space, you know, for people to, to have um, the opportunity to, you know, actually suggest alternative um, views on how, how governance should, should proceed. Uh, but we, we seem to have this obsession with law and other processes without, you know, going deeper into the, into the bigger and more critical question of the quality of governance that we are, we are getting. And my suspicion is that if we don't engage, if we don't seize this moment to have a broader national debate about uh, institutional impunity, about our accountability in our country, uh, my, my, my sense is that, you know, this kind of agitation will flare up from time to time. And I, and I think we should seize this moment to open up the space and engage on an issue by issue basis on how we can Okay, get um, right. Dr. Austin <laughs> Tam George, um, do stay with us. We're going to take a quick break now and then get a report from one of our correspondents 
in London. While around 100,000 UK-based Nigerians have descended on central London, calling for an end to police brutality in the homeland, they gathered in Parliament Square and have now arrived at Downing Street to hand in a petition to the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson. There have been almost two weeks of protests in the UK calling for justice. We're here because we need justice for the killing of uh, innocent souls, innocent protesters that were protesting at Lekki Gate, you know? So it's, it's not fair the way the, the government are treating the people. So we need justice. And we are here for bad government. We are here for justice for those that were killed. We are here the way the government are treating the nation. So stop, and we are here for those people. Justice for the killing of Lekki. Let's cross live now to London, where Arise correspondent John Cookson is at Downing Street for today's protest. Uh, John, it's good to have you with us. Uh, what more can you tell us? Hey, good to see you. Well, the protest has now moved from Downing Street uh, to here in Parliament Square. There's about a thousand Nigerians, uh, UK-based Nigerians, of course, from all over the country, making their feelings known loud and clear to the British government. This is about the uh, 10th or 11th uh, protest uh, in central London in the last uh, two weeks. Of course, their anger about the killing of uh, Nigerian civilians, in particular in Nigeria in the last uh, uh, couple of weeks, and especially last uh, Tuesday. I've been joined by uh, one or two of the demonstrators here. What's your name? My name is Prince Olu. <coughs> Olu, Olu. Prince Olu. Olu, where did you start? Why, yeah. why is it important for you to be here today? Yeah, the reason why I'm here today is that, firstly, I'm from Nigeria, and if you can look at the flag of Nigeria, it's having green, white, green, with dot of red on it. That is the blood of the youth that they have been killing Nigeria. The youth are the future of tomorrow, but the elders of today are killing Nigerians. They are killing Nigerian youth, which is wrong, which is absolutely wrong. What have the youth did? They, what they did was that they are, they, are, they, are, they are protesting for good cause. Protesting for good cause, for, for better wages, for good road. There is no light, there is no, there is no employment. All our youth are jobless and all these senators, they are handing a lot of money, millions and millions. Why should it be like that? Nigerians should arise. They should stop killing our, our youth again. We need better life for these youth. Nigerians are crying. The blood, this is the blood of Nigeria. This is the blood. The blood of the Olo, youth are crying. Olo, Olo, Olo. Now the president appeared on television. He, he referenced the killings. Does that help the situation? The, 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 the problem that the problem that is Nigeria now is that the president even come come out without even mentioning the youth that have been killed in Nigeria. If his children are being killed. What will he feel? Which is not having the feeling for Nigerians. Why, why is he there? I don't. With the parents of the, of the, of the but I don't think. I don't. I just the move on to one of your comments. Thank you very much. Yeah. Why, why did you come here today? Uh, well, we've come for a lot of things. Um, like you will see, the children are protesting, the youths are protesting just mm -hmm. for the uh, country to at least stop SARS. That's how it started. And on the 20th, the government planned and shoot those children while, while protesting. But, but hasn't the government ended SARS? Hasn't it dismantled? No, they, 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 said idea, they said it and they've added another thing. They transferred it into Just SWAT. Right. And that SWAT is equal to this, as usual. They used it to affect the, the view of people. They used it to vague the view of people. They didn't change anything. What, what, what sort of message do you want to get to the people in the homeland? Sorry? What, what sort of message do you want as a, a UK-based Nigerian yeah, to, to the please, people at home? We want you people to intervene and see that the Nigerian president should not get any visa again to UK. As, so long as he has spoiled the country he where he is coming from. Nigeria. He should go and build schools for the students. He should yeah. build hospitals. He should equally give the, our old ones. We have no home. 
Old ones have no, they have no care home. Old ones have no care home, no palliative. The food meant for these old people, we are all stored in their warehouses. I, I, I can hear the fury and the anger, the yes, understandable anger yes, in your voice. That is but, but, but wait a minute, how are you going to bring about change? What's the plan? Oh, the change. Uh, yeah, please, yeah, can you download them? The change we want is, I'm sorry I, I lost my Silent, voice. Please. Silent, it's please. a decentralization of power. Right now, the power is just too centralized at, in, at the northern location of Nigeria. My voice is lost at the northern location of Nigeria. So what we want, eh, we want the different, the different um, tribe, tribes we've got in Nigeria, each tribe should be able to provide for its people still under one united Nigeria. But what, what you're talking about is big issues here. It's almost, it's almost a revolution, isn't it? Is no, that no, no, no. That was not a revolution. how it was before. It was like that before it was changed. And when it was like that, the country was far better. We, you can't see Nigerians outside of Nigeria. So the changes to this system we have right now, we need it back to that system. Restructuring is not a revolution. Restructuring means people coming together to talk about what is going on, take a position of truth and look at ways forward. That is restructuring. Businesses do it. They come together in a board meeting. They sit around and look at what has happened in the past That's year. True. And look at actions that have been taken. And now decide where we'll go. Restructuring includes looking at the constitution of the country and for the people to have a say in the constitution. Do you think Mr. Bahari will listen to you? He will listen to us if we continue what we are doing. Because what we are doing will affect their interest. They will affect, it will affect their interest. Because of what has happened in the last two weeks, they have listened and spoken because their interest has been affected. As long as we keep pushing, they will listen to us because now we are speaking our own voice. We are not tribalized anymore. Exactly. What they've been using before is to divide the country through tribalism. Yes. Yeah, but today, through religion, too. through religion, but today we are all oh, here, okay. representative okay. of every Let's tribe. Bring this lady in here. What do you want to say? Yeah, I just want to say that there are too much inequality in our system too much corruption in our system. We want the government to address those issues. And we want the government to end the killing of our youth. We want the government to, to address police issues. The issues at stand now is that the government should address corruption, should address issues, and there should be equality for all people. No, 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 you Nigeria. say the government should do this, should but, do that, but, but wait, yeah. do you think they're listening? Well, I, I think with all these protests going on all over the no, world, they, they, they no, should listen. No, no, no. Because it's not only in the UK, it's not only in the UK, it's, all, it's global. This protest is global, and with this, I think they should listen. They should put on their listening ears and listen to the people. I'll have to hand back to Lagos in a moment. You actually said something about the end of listening. On a good day, we have on, on, a, on a good day, a normal government should, should listen to his people. Exactly. But rather, what they do is kill us when we talk. We can, all, we can protest here with nobody killing us because we are not in Nigeria. What we're saying now is this, if you go to Nigeria, this SARS is killing our youth. The youth of tomorrow, I am a man close to my 50, I'm no longer youth. I'm no longer youth. We are talking for our junior brothers, our children and all that. Somebody like Buhari came to power, the first time he came to the corridor of power was in 1975. That was more than 45 years ago. Now he's still in power, killing the youth, which is the, the future of the country. What they ask him is a very simple thing, reform the police. Now in the United Kingdom where we are, the, the mayor of London, the police of London is under the mayor of London. Why can't the police of Nigeria be under the governors of Nigeria? It's a very simple thing. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Can I just uh, let's, let's bring one, one, more, one more in. Can I just ask, uh, I'd like the, 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 the international world to step in because the concern is that what really concerned me is that we've seen international world go and into countries and intervene in less situation than the trouble in Nigeria right now. Nigerians escape Nigeria like no man's business because of the corruption in Nigeria. The Western world, including the United Kingdom, saddens me that they watch. Is it because of their benefit? Consequently, we are all paying. I run a charity. Most of the people I support are Nigerians fleeing Nigeria. 
Where are the international world? Why can they not do even half of what they've done in the past? Were you disappointed that Boris Johnson didn't accept I'm your petition? I'm very disappointed that Boris Johnson did not do the right thing. Unfortunately, it's one of many disappointments. But it's disappointing that the international world, for me, we're looking on the international world to, to intervene. And I want to see what they've done to other countries, how they've addressed issues. Why is it not the same for Nigeria now? Why is it not the same? Thank you very much. You're indeed. welcome. Well, a, a wide range of strong views there by angry Nigerians uh, here in, in the UK. Uh, this protest, uh, as I say, uh, attracting a crowd of about uh, a thousand in total. There's about 200,000 Nigerians in the UK, 100,000 living here uh, in the capital. These protests will undoubtedly go on until there is the change that uh, uh, these people are looking for uh, in their homeland. Uh, and with that, I'll hand you back, uh, back to you guys. All right, uh, John Cookson, uh, many thanks uh, for the update uh, on that. Uh, but uh, just before we uh, go, we'd like to uh, bring back uh, Dr. Austin uh, Tam George. Uh, he's been hanging on and talking about uh, the protest as well. Uh, Dr. Tam George, if you're still there, uh, you heard what happened there in London. Uh, the, there's no sign of let up by the protest there by uh, Nigerians living in that region. Now, let's talk about the reaction of the international community. Uh, to what's going on here in Nigeria, beyond words of condemnation, were they sufficient, you think? All right, Dr. Dab, George, I hope you can hear me. Beyond uh, words of condemnation, were they sufficient based on the reaction of the international community to these protests in Nigeria? All right, we seem to have... Uh, 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 lost uh, Dr. Austin Tam George there. Uh, hopefully, we'll get him back before the end of the bulletin. Now, Fadi, yeah, you know, it's uh, been an interesting uh, development, but uh, just as uh, John Cookson uh, reported, uh, we've seen uh, no sign of a letter. But, but on the part, I was just going to ask him regarding the issue of the response of the British government not taking up the petition yeah. of uh, the of Nigerians. The Nigerians and diaspora. Indeed, and that seems to be. Uh, let down, but it hasn't dampened the reaction the towards that, the mood towards the that. So yes, what do you think they... is fueling this uh, <laughs> resolve and desire to keep well, going on? Yes, the thing is, a lot of them are out there because mm. of the conditions that they lived in whilst yeah. they were in Nigeria, and then they simply wanted a better society for themselves. That's the reason why they're all out there. Um, so they would like to see some changes, reforms that the, the youths have clamoured for. If such changes are, are done, then some of them would really like to come back home. Very good, uh, Fadi. Now, let, we have uh, Dr. Austin, uh, Austin uh, Tam George, who is uh, back with us. Uh, earlier, I was ask, asking about the reaction of the international community uh, to the protest in Nigeria. Uh, beyond words of condemnation, were they sufficient? Yes, I, I, think, I think the international community has reacted uh, in a way... Um, that is very, that very encouraging. Um, it shows that you know whatever happens in a small community or whatever happens in a particular country sometimes can have resonance uh, across the globe. Um, that is the world we live in now, and, and it's, it's, I think it's also um, it's also a function of the kind of changing um, character of citizenship across the world. Uh, once something happens in somewhere in Indonesia, for instance, you see people responding in Canada. And when something happens, um, you know, when a government takes a decision in a particular country, you see that you know governments all around the world, um, you know, tend to respond. So it shows the element of globalization um, in the way in, in, uh, governments are constructed these days. Uh, but ultimately, I, I think we need to we need to be certain about this. Ultimately, the solution, uh, you know, to the problems we face in this country will be found right here in the home soil. Uh, in Nigeria, and that is why you know Nigerians of all age and um, demographics, you know, need to come together to say, look, another kind of country is possible. A country, you know, where people can uh, can live with each other without without consideration about their ethnic identity. A country where political leadership can be rooted only on the basis of meritocracy and competence, uh, rather than religious and ethnic considerations. And um, the kind of country where young people 
you know, can have opportunity wherever they are located, you know, within, within, the, within the country. You know, so these are the kind of these are the kind of possibilities that the answers uh, uh, campaign has has opened up. Uh, what is left now is for both those who are in the political space and 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 the, and the, and the citizens to, to come together to have, you know, as I said before, uh, a national debate on a sector by sector basis. You know, from the clip you showed of protesters in the US, you can tell um, that this goes beyond um, simply um, uh, talking about the immunity we've seen in, in the police unit. As I said in the, in the, in the earlier segment, the NSAS protest, the NSAS campaign, um, is an institutional metaphor for Nigerians resisting um, a frightening culture of impunity. Uh, they want better government uh, accountability. They want people to be able to um, say, look, you, you know, how, how can we allow this country to go down the way it is going? You know, so I think we need to seize this moment. Uh, this is not against any particular uh, political holder. This is not against any particular government. This is an opportunity, you know, for us to open up the, the, the debate, you know, for, uh, for, for how we can move the country in a different direction. Indeed, Dr. Tam George, um, most of the protesters out there in London had something to say and they were all clamoring for the centralization of power, restructuring. Has this um, protest um, thrown up this line of debate again? Yes, I mean, it, it, when power is over-centralized, abuse is also over-centralized. So there, there is no question about that. Um, but, you know, it's not just the power, it is it's how the power is exercised um, and whether it, it serves a beneficent end. Um, the, the experience that we've had in this country over the past 60 years is that we can actually do better. And um, if you look at the indices, I mean, you know, yeah, Nigeria is not, it's not, it's not uh, living up to its fullest potential. And, um, you know, we have the, we are, we are considered to be the headquarters for the most poor people in the world. That, that is not a compliment. We have one of the highest uh, jobless rates in the world. That's not a compliment. And uh, we have some of the best soil and weather patterns in the world, but we don't have food sufficiency. And uh, so th th all these are negative indices. And we have capacity, both in the homeland and among Nigerians in the diaspora, to, to change the narrative, to change the trajectory on which the country is traveling. And my own suggestion um, is that this is an open. We shouldn't um, scandalize this. We shouldn't criminalize the protest. What we should see is to consider the protest as an opening point, an entry point, to launch a, a, you know, a bigger national debate on how we can change the direction of the country. So I think, I think those who... Uh, who have started this, this, this conversation, you know, this protest, they should be considered as patriots. Um, the, the opportunity should be seized uh, by all strata of society to see how we can change the discussion, how we can better refocus our energies on how, how we can run an inclusive administration, how we can increase uh, citizenship participation, how we can reset our national governmental values to see that you know, we have a governmental structure that, that, that all Nigerians, wherever they are located, uh, can. <laughs> Uh, indeed, uh, Dr. Tam George, well, I would like to take you back to the issue of the international community's uh, reaction uh, so far. Uh, taking a look at some specifics here, President Buhari, in his speech, uh, urged the international community to know the fact first before taking a position. Uh, what is the implication of that statement, you think? Well, it is ironic. Apparently, we're having some uh, technical issues uh, with uh, uh, that connection with Dr. Austin Tam Georgia. But uh, just like he said, uh, Fadi, um, you know, the issue of restructuring, uh, reformation, you know, is still on the front burner. But yeah. uh, perhaps it's time we take a, a second, a uh, closer look to it. Indeed, it is time. I mean, people have talked about that mm. like for forever. Um, but somehow, in spite of it being one of the core um, agendas mm. for their campaign, um, before they came into power, they have simply refused to go 
to talk about restructuring mm. anymore. Um, you just asked um, um, Dr. Tam George about the international community yep. uh, weighing mm -hmm. into the situation mm -hmm. in Nigeria and our president's response to them, uh, saying that they should not be hasty in judgment or pronouncement. Um, one wonders, why do we have international, why, why, do we, why do we live as a global community if we cannot weigh in mm -hmm. into each other's um, affairs? Uh, but there, there are uh, diplomatic connotations to that. Uh, there's a limitation to what you can weigh in. In the case. In the uh, you know, they, they, uh, they didn't go out of line. It was just yeah, caution. but it's, it's, it's a way of cautioning. Yeah. It's a way of suggestion. And, uh, you know, just do the right thing and ensure that uh, uh, the mayhem and, of course, the chaos that we've been witnessing uh, is reduced to uh, the barest minimum. Uh, mm, but, but, to, but the international clamour has mm, been wide, mm, huge, from... All spheres, the yeah. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, the US um, um, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, mm. Bill and Hillary Clinton, all of them, everyone has weighed into um, the protest Indeed. in Nigeria. Indeed, which is an interesting development uh, nonetheless.